So I really like Animaniacs. I made a video on the show before and I might make more in the future. But you want to know one thing that really makes the show work? It's vast variety of characters. The Warner Trio is great. Pinky and the Brain are iconic. Slappy Squirrel is a fucking goddess. The Good Feathers have their moments. Mr. Skullhead's great. The Hip Hippos I like, but I don't think they can hold a segment on their own. Buns and Mindy are kind of boring. Chicken Boo, again, I like, but really don't think he deserves his own segments. Okay, not everyone could hold their own segment, but that's not the point of today's video. Today, I want to talk about a certain duo within the show. A duo whose shorts never fully focused on comedy unlike the others. A duo who never really got much time to shine. A duo who I consider highly underrated. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present Rita and Runt. I right, here's the setup. One night, co-protagonist Dorita was taken back to the animal shelter. As her previous owner states, she's too independent. This is where she meets Runt, a happy-go-lucky yet not-so-bright dog. This is also when Rita talks, and later sings, about her feelings on humans and why she thinks they suck. Which she's not wrong about, by the way. All she ever wants is a decent home to stay in where the owner won't treat her like complete shit. So with that... Our dynamic duo break out of the shelter and agree to help each other find a home, leading for many more adventures to come. Leading for not that many more adventures to come. Anyway, like I said before, this is Rita, who's a sassy, street smart, independent cat who don't need no owner. But wants one anyway because, well, come on, who the fuck wants to be homeless? I always enjoy her witty remarks to run stupidity or anything else really. You're not a very smart cat, are you, Runt? Nope. But at least you're honest. For fifty dollars and a chance for the festiva, how many brain cells does a dog have? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Nine. Definitely nine. Runt, you ever hear the word share? Oh sure, Rita. She's a pretty lady with tattoos. I won't even bother. But despite Runt being stupid, she still genuinely cares about him. Like how in their first episode she states this. Listen, what do you say we pal around together for a while? You know, at least till we find a home. That would be terrific. But when we each find a home, I don't know you, you don't know me. Deal? Uh, I don't have any cards. Might want to remember that line because she'd totally stick by it and totally wouldn't do something like, say, I don't know, literally ditch an opportunity to get a new home after Runt got left behind. I'm telling you, man, these two are just too fucking wholesome for a show like this. It shows behind all the sassiness and street smartness and independentness and all those other nesses. Her heart's still in the right place and she can be really empathetic towards others. Also, seeing as she's voiced by famous Broadway actor Bernadette Peters, Rita would have a song number in pretty much every segment. Now, when it comes to songs, Animaniacs has some bangers. The opening theme, the monkey song, Wacko's America, I'm Cute, the list goes on. However... I mainly find most of Rita's songs to be pretty alright. Nothing terrible, nothing amazing, just kinda tolerable. I still do have a few favorites though, like Humans Ain't What They Seem To Be or Let's Try For Two. Oh, did I mention Bernadette's singing voice? Somewhere I can hang my hat Somewhere for a dog and cat Somewhere Fucking beautiful. Cat. Then we have Ron to I just fucking love. As a matter of fact, I always loved characters like Runt. Characters who aren't the brightest but still mean well and are so full of joy. Runt's clearly no exception. Despite him being brain dead to the point where he thinks Rita's another dog, which is one of the reasons why they even stick together. Runt always has his back out for Rita and will find joy out of almost anything. Even Egyptian slave work. So yeah, I love these two. They have great chemistry. And Bernadette Pierce and Frank Walker really bring this duo to life. Now when it comes to the scenarios themselves, like I said, they never really revolved around comedy that much. Like, yeah, they still have comedy from Rump being stupid, Rita's witty remarks, and a bit of slapstick here and there. But they mainly focused on more heartfelt stuff and the stakes in each scenario. This sort of led many people to say these shorts feel out of place because of it. But like, first of all, these shorts still have humor, like I said earlier. Second of all... There's nothing wrong with mostly comedic pieces of media getting heartfelt at times. Just saying. 
Luckily though, these shorts do mostly keep a consistent tone. Third of all, that doesn't really judge the quality of the shorts themselves. Which if you ask me, is good. One thing I appreciate about these shorts are the stakes for each scenario. Some instances would have Rita play damsel in distress. Okay, she wouldn't really be in distress, but bear with me here. And Runt would usually be the one to save her. Some instances almost involve Rita being cooked into a pot pie, almost getting stabbed to death for her fur to be used for violin string. Like seriously dude, you couldn't just shave her? You seriously had to go that extra mile? Fucking psycho. And almost being drowned by this witch hunter who thought, well, she was a witch. Even in their first segment, seeing as they're in an animal shelter, Rita literally states, They're gonna gas, gas us, you buffoon, buffoon will be, will be dead. dead! Yeah, little Timmy. That's what happens to all those poor little animals at the shelter if they don't get adopted. They fucking die! There's also a short where they're in World War II during the Holocaust, where not only do we see Nazi soldiers, but this man right here who I think may be implied to be Hitler. Hitler. This man right here. God, kids' cartoons can go places at times, man. However, I do wish some of these segments were a little longer. Like Les Misre animals. Like, I ain't joking when I say the short literally starts with Ron breaking out of a pound, and Rita being caged up with the other cats. We barely get to see how they got in those positions. I think it really would have been a benefit if we, you know, got to see it. There's also this other segment where they're on this rabbit farm, and Ron figures out that they're gonna be killed and lets them free pretty quickly. This doesn't apply to every single short, but I'm just saying, I wish some were longer, you know? Now what? Now if I were to pick my favorite segments, one of them would be Frank and Runt, mainly for having one of the best songs, like I said earlier, and some of the best gags. There's also putting on the Blitz because, well, Hitler and a kid show. And it had a really great ending, with, again, Rita ditching her new home for Runt. Smitten with Kittens is a good one, too. It explores the idea of Rita being a mother fader, three little kittens they find. At first she's a little hesitant, but after the mandatory song, she decides to give it a shot anyway. An officer does this. J just look at this. This is fucking adorable. But yeah, overall these segments are really solid. Except for one. Kiki's Kitten. Easily the worst read on run segment, and maybe one of the worst segments in the whole Animaniacs series. We're dealing with one of those Torture porns, as many people call them. You know the ones I'm talking about. Power for Gary from Spongebob. No such luck from Loud House. Everyone knows it's Bendy from Foster's Home. Smile for the Ed from Ed and Nettie. This is something the series would usually avoid, actually. But having the tortured victims be genuine assholes who deserve it, or simply just not going too far with it. Kiki's Kitten doesn't do either of those things, unfortunately. It follows two scientists taking Rita to this gorilla chick right here. And what falls is almost nothing but Rita getting beaten around by her. Almost nothing in this episode is actually funny, and Rita did nothing to deserve this. Like, nothing at all. And aside from maybe a few funny lines from Rita, there is just nothing of substance here. It's nothing but a giant Rita torture porn, and I fucking hate it. <sighs> okay, so we're almost 10 minutes of the video now, so we might as well wrap this up. Okay, so despite all the praise I gave for these segments, only 12 were ever made. And if you know Animaniacs, I'm sure you know why. The shorts were by far some of the most expensive to produce, with not only them having to write a song every episode, but being this big Broadway star, Bernadette Pierce is just a bitch to hire. So eventually, they just stopped making full segments out of them, only ever using future appearances for cameos. And they're most likely not going to be playing a major part in the reboot, which bums me out. Rita and Rumpy not be my number one favorite characters, that honor still goes to Slappy Squirrel, but they're definitely in my top five of the shorts being a refreshing change of pace for the show, with the more heartfelt tone, higher stakes, and of course, Rita and Runt themselves being such a lovable duo. I'd probably say their shorts have more spin-off potential than Pinky and the Brain, and with more current shows like Tuka and Birdie, DuckTales and Invincible having more all-stars in their cast, I don't think a Rita and Runt spin-off coming out today would be entirely impossible. Maybe one day I'll pitch my own idea for a spin-off, but for now, I hope you can see why I consider these two a highly underrated duo. Okay, bye. Okay, so one time Randy Beeman was like going through YouTube and then he found my channel and then he subscribed to my channel and then he said to himself, wow, I hope other people subscribe to this fantastic channel. And, I, you know, I, I kind of agree with him. I'm not saying K-bye because, you know, I already said that.